There's no doubt that open source gave us the home 3D printer. RepRap started it all. We now have open source firmware, open source slicers, open source controls such as Octoprint with amazing features. We've even got extra fast printers like the Voron, which is completely open source. And now a lot of those features just showed up in this, the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon with the AMS multicolor system. Except this is closed source. Is this where we're headed now? Closed source is going to trump open source? Let's talk about it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. If you follow 3D printing at all in the past 12 months, there's no way you couldn't have heard of the Bamboo Lab X1. It's become one of the most popular printers with its extra fast printing speed, very good quality, and also the AMS system, which allows you to print multiple colors. Now, if you search on Google Trends and search 3D printing or Ender 3, you'll find they're about the same amount of search. So Ender 3 is still kind of synonymous with 3D printing, where if you search for Bamboo X1 or even the new Prusa MK4, they're way down in search terms from those two. Now, some in the community have complained that it's not an open source printer, although on their website they talk about their patents are open to the open source community, just not for commercial purposes. But then they also say that their electronics and their firmware are not open source. And unfortunately, I've been here before. Let's talk about this first. I bought my DaVinci 1.0 back in 2014. It was my first 3D printer. It cost $500, came fully assembled, take it out of the box, and start printing from the sample prints on the SD card. It even came with its own slicer, similar to this, fully assembled with its own slicer. This even came with its own filament cartridges. Now, it only printed high temperature ABS. Didn't print PLA or anything else, just ABS, which came in these cartridges. And the cartridges had a chip on the bottom that would tell you how much filament was left in the cartridge, kind of like an early filament runout detection. Now, as far as print quality or anything like that, there was really nothing special. It was probably worse than some of the open source printers, and they shared a lot of information. So you could modify your printer and improve it. This was completely closed source. In fact, one of the bearing mounts for the mechanisms at the top on mine cracked. And so I was getting really bad prints. I contacted the company because it's under warranty, and they ran me through the ringer. I had to give them a serial number that's down here at the bottom. I had to show them a receipt where I bought it that I didn't buy it on eBay. We went back and forth for a week and they finally said, okay, send the machine back. I, go, I don't want to send this heavy machine back. Are you going to pay for it? They said, no, you have to send it back. I said, all I want is the little plastic mount. Can you just send me the mount? Back and forth a little more. Finally, they agreed. They'll send me a new bearing mount. So while I waited for the bearing mount to arrive, I checked the rest of the machine. Probably should have done this first. And I found that three other bearing mounts had a mild crack in it. Turns out it was a common failure mode on these things. And so I hoped they would send me more than one, but no. They sent me one bearing mount. It was enough to get the thing to print again. And this is where the open source community helped me out because I did a search on Thingiverse. And remember, I was relatively new to 3D printing and I found someone had already designed a new bearing mount, much beefier, much stiffer for this machine, and I could print it on my DaVinci. So once I got that new bearing mount mounted, I went and printed a whole bunch more of those bearing mounts and they're still in this machine. They're very reliable, very strong, but the open source community bailed me out. That's when I started putting this on my YouTube channel and it grew my YouTube channel because I was showing people how to fix their DaVinci 1.0 without having to send it back to the company. And I fixed a lot of problems on mine and shared it and a lot of people appreciated that. Now it's not an open source firmware. So to update the firmware on this, you would connect the printer through USB cable to your computer, then connect through their slicer to the internet and it would update the firmware in your machine. So you have no idea what it was doing, but it would update and say, hey, now you're at version 2.1.1 or whatever. And that worked pretty good until one of the updates caused a problem with the cartridges. A cartridge will hold about 300 meters of plastic. And if you printed something and it ended up stopping at about 170 meters, next time you use that cartridge on a print, the printer would say it's empty. So you'd have 170 meters left and you couldn't use it. I found out other people were having the same problem. So I contacted XYZ Printing and says, hey, we got a problem. Is there a fix for this? They denied that it happened or existed. I ended up having to send them my serial number, all my information again, to the point I was pretty frustrated. And then the open source community came to the rescue again. Someone, and I don't know the exact names, or a group of people had figured out how to reflash this 
with Repetier firmware. And all you had to do was load it just like you're loading an Arduino, the same way we'd update an 8-bit machine today. And you could reflash this to Repetier and oh my God, what a difference. The print quality was better. I could print PLA on this thing. It was amazing. So much better than what they offered. I did a video on it showing people how to do that. XYZ Printing got really mad at me. They said he wouldn't talk to me anymore. And that was the end of me and XYZ Printing and the DaVinci. And that's why I start to get concerned about this. Now, full disclosure, Bamboo Lab sent me this printer, but this is actually my second one. See, back before they did their Kickstarter, they offered me one of these printers, and I said, I don't support Kickstarter. If you launch and you're successful and you've shipped your Kickstarters, then I'll consider putting it on the channel. They, they did the Kickstarter, they were successful, they started shipping them, and then I contacted them and said, okay, I'd, I'd like to try one. By that point, you know, it was three months, people were already bragging about this machine and loved it. And they said, yeah, we'd love to send you one. So by the time I got my machine, my first machine, not this one, it was about six months after everyone else, which is fine because the Kickstarter people should have got theirs first and everything else. Well, I got mine, I was able to take it out of the box, have a little bit of assembly, not much, and I was able to print a 3D Benchy. And frankly, it wasn't that great. And it also gave me an error on the screen. And I went through all the error codes, did everything, and I could not get this thing to actually home properly. The head would only go so far, and it was really making noise. I contacted Bamboo Labs. I ended up submitting a support ticket, and they had me try some things, and we couldn't fix it. They said, you're going to have to send it back so we can see this machine. And I went, oh, crap. Here we go again. They sent me a new one. They said, put the old one in the box and then we'll pay. they'll pay for shipping. So I shipped it back. I don't know what they found. They never gave me an answer what the problem was. But this new one, I took it out of the box, printed it. Everything's been working fine since. So it appears that Bamboo Labs is much better at supporting their printer than XYZ Printing was from my experience in the past. I still don't like the fact I got to send it back. But anyway, it is closed source. Other than the slicer, it turns out when they first released it, it was their slicer, but they had to admit that it was based on Prusa Slicer, which is based on Slick 3R, which is open source. So there's open source rules, how you use it. They had to reveal that. And they finally came clean and did that, which was good. I like the results I'm getting out of this second printer. I can see where people really like it. I mean, it does print fast and print good. Now it's loud. Bam, 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 as it's printing so fast. I guess that goes with the territory. Now, early on, people would complain about these being too loud, these low-cost printers, because the steppers were loud, the fans were loud. Now we have silent drivers. The steppers are quieter. The fans are getting better. Power supply fans tend to be the loudest, and people have figured out how to make covers to make that a little quieter. Uh, I do hear complaints about the amount of plastic used when you do two-color prints. Like, this is a two-color chep cube that I printed on it. I like how the software works with the AMS system. But it does do a purge block, and also there's a poop shoot in the back here where it spits out the color changes. Most of this came from making this chep cube. So this little chep cube produced all this waste. It's still not efficient at printing two color. Um, hopefully that gets better in the future. For $1,500, it's a pretty, pretty good machine from what I can see. Although this isn't a review, there is a P1P version, a stripped down version for about, I think, $700. I still am going to focus on the low cost printers like this because I still think this is a great place to start. Under $300, you can get started with a Ender 3 Neo or an Ender 2 Pro. Unfortunately, they're not completely open source, but a lot of the parts are available. Easy to fix if something does break. And you learn if you even like 3D printing for under $300 versus spending $1,500. And then find out, eh, I hardly use it. So some people have asked me why I didn't have this on the channel. So this is some of the reason why. I lived through a closed source printer for a long time. I really don't want to go down that path again. Although it seems like more and more stuff is going closed source. It doesn't have to be completely open source. I'm fine with 90, 80%, you know, so at least you can get replacement parts and still keep some technology that makes you competitive. That's fine with me, but to go completely closed source... That's just That just bothers me. If that's where we're going with the community, if that's where 3D printing is going, I think we lose a lot because the whole rep wrap idea was that it's open source and one printer can produce another printer and that's why we have the Midwest Rep Wrap Festival and now the East Coast Rep Wrap Festival and there's a few other Rep Wrap Festivals. The whole idea of rep wrap is the fact that it's open source, that it's one can produce another and that seems to be going away. So that's my concern. That's why you don't see this as much on my channel. In fact, until now. But what are your thoughts? Where's 3D printing going? Is open source dead? Is it just going to be only for the Voron and the, maybe the Prusa printers? Or is that going away too? You know, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.
If you like this video, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy through the affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.